Kojima. I'm the head nerd in charge at Moto IQ. Now, Moto IQ is the premier website and YouTube channel for all you hardcore automotive tech guys. So if you're serious about building your car, if you uh, race, uh, do grassroots racing, drifting, time attack, road racing, even if you're a pro, we have content that you would probably really enjoy. So in Moto IQ, a lot of our preferences like really well-rounded builds, like you see these cars around me. So these are cars that have motors that perform really well. Suspension, brakes, our more track-oriented cars have aerodynamics. Everything is designed with a purpose to work well, be well-rounded. Uh, we like to say we engineer these cars. So um, our cars uh, are well-balanced. They're not like just all power or only handling, they have a bit of everything. So our engines have broad power bands, minimal tur turbo lag, good usable torque, but um, still pretty impressive power, but you know, maybe not internet forum bragging power. Our engines are also like really reliable. So you can daily drive them, you can take them to the track, pound them all day at the track, do a whole track weekend and they're not gonna come apart. I think in a lot of the things that we run into when we talk to other people, they might say, oh, I could build way more power than that. Oh, sure you can, but you know, a lot of people don't realize that if you do a track day at a road course like Willow Springs or Bunning Willow, you know, you're, out, you're on the gas for like 20 to 30 minutes at a time, and you're revving every gear out to the max. That's a pretty good demand. You know, we build our engines to take that kind of stress. You know, also, like, let's say you do drifting, you know, like a drag racer might be on it for 10 seconds, but somebody that's drifting might be on the throttle for uh, like a minute with like really, really horrible abuse, banging off the rev limiter, uh, really loading the drivetrain, you know, really pounding. So, you know, with drift engines, we see more problems than almost any other form of racing. In fact, I think drifting, Power boats and off-road are probably the hardest on motors. Then road racing is a little bit notched down. And when you're looking at the production motors like these and you're doubling their power or even more, even if you use the best parts, that's asking a lot of the basic architecture of the motor. This is where something like fluid damper comes in pretty handy. Now, when you're putting like killer stress to where you're approaching the structural limitations of the block and crank, uh, there's a lot of torsional uh, forces involved. Now, a lot of these torsional forces are uh, amplified through harmonics. And, uh, you know, that's where a lot of people will use balancers. Now, your factory balancer is kind of designed as a NVH uh, device, that's noise, vibration, and harshness. It basically damps out uh, kind of uh, lower order vibrations that could be um, pesky or make noises or odd vibrations when you're just driving around your stock car. Now, when you really modify a car, you're getting like problems like torsional whip, like you're putting so much stress on the crank that it actually is twisting. Now when you, everything has a natural frequency and the natural frequency is when these forces can like start multiplying and really amplify inside your motor with your crank and that's a lot of force that can harm your bearings, cause the crank to fail, even your rods, a lot of things, um, even cause your main bearings to get messed up and you start to see uh, fretting on your block with the main caps and stuff. So what the fluid damper does really well is it, it uh, really helps attenuate those uh, maybe second order vibrations that really could destroy your engine. If not destroy, uh, uh, harm. So the fluid damper is basically a uh, sealed metal container with an inertia ring in there. The inertia ring is the part that's tuned to the motor to counteract the uh, frequencies that are harmful. But what's interesting is the uh, fluid damper, the uh, inertia ring is contained in this housing and it's filled with a silicon fluid. Now the silicon fluid is a real thick viscous fluid 
it's basically the same stuff that's in viscous couplings and maybe your setter diff or your rear end. And uh, it's not solidly constrained, so the uh, inertia ring's free to move. So what's cool about this is the worse the torsional whip, the harder the, the fluid damper works to attenuate the vibrations. So it's kind of like vibration amplitude sensitive instead of just frequency sensitive. Now like your OEM balancer, it's tuned for like a lower order vibration. It's kind of held in there with like rubber. The frequency sensitivity is adjusted through the mass of the ring and the durometer of the rubber. It works for a very narrow range, but the fluid damper works over a wide range. The harder the crank whips, the harder it works. So whenever we do a serious build, as long as fluid damper has an application, it goes on the motor. Mm -hmm.